Okay, this is chapter two, section one, rates of change and limits. Um, a reminder that our recorded lessons, um, I'll be moving fairly fast. Uh, you always have the option to pause and rewind and watch again. So if you get alarmed that I'm going too fast, remember to pause it um, and write down your notes or whatever you need to do. Okay, chapter two, rates of change and limits. Uh, a limit of a function. We're going to be talking about limits. A uh, limit is basically the whole um, backbone of calculus. All of calculus is based on limits. Um, we're going to learn what a basic limit is, um, how to find them, um, and what they do for us. A limit in plain English is the intended height of a function when you get super close to an x value the intended height. So we're looking at graphs and how high the function is going to be, so the y value. We're talking about how much the y is when x is close to some value. What do I mean by an intended height? Well, sometimes a function has a hole in it, and we want to know, well, if the hole wasn't there, if it was filled in, how high would the graph be? That might be the intended height. I'll show you some examples. What do I mean by super close to an x value? Why not just use an x value? Well, sometimes a function has numbers that are excluded or a domain that is restrictive. For example, maybe at x equals 2, the function makes us divide by 0. If that's the case, x equals 2 is not in the domain, and we cannot use it to see how high the function is. So what we do is we look at values that are super close to that value, super close to 2, something like 2.01 or 1.99999. What happens to the function there? Does that give us a clue of what the intended height of that function would be if 2 actually was in the domain? So here's an example. Uh, at if you look at this graph, when x equals 1, we have a hole in the graph. That circle means a hole in the graph. That means at x equals 1, the function does not exist. 1 is not in the domain. But if you look at that um, really close, it looks like we know how high the graph wanted to be when x equals 1. It looks like when x equals 1, the height wanted to be one also. So what we'd say is that the limit at x equals one is one. The limit is the height, remember. So the limit is one when x gets really close to one. That's what I mean by intended height. Now, now when we talk about height of a function, again, remember we're talking about the y value. So what's the height of this function when x equals two? Well, the function is x squared, and when x equals 2, 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. So the height when x equals 2, well, all we need to do is plug in 2 into our function and square it, and we get 4. So the intended height, or the actual height when x equals 2, is 4. So as long as 2 is in the domain, it's easy. We can just substitute it in and figure out exactly how high the graph is. That's what I'm talking about, height of a function. Our first limit statement then. Since f of 2 equals 4, then the limit as x approaches 2 of this function f is 4. We read it like this. The limit as x approaches 2 the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is 4 and the x with the arrow and the 2 is really a subscript um, if I was writing this out I usually use a cursive L to represent limit limit as x approaches 2 and I usually put f of x kind of bigger so we can see um, it's on a different level and then that's equal to 4 so that's how I write that. Um, 
The x approaches 2 is not supposed to be super large. So you kind of want to fit limit and x approaches 2 kind of on one level. As x gets super close to 2 is another way of thinking of this. As x gets super close to 2, the height of the function is 4. As x gets super close to 2, the height of the function gets really close to 4. Functions that don't reach the intended heights. Here's an example of a function that I'd like you to type into your calculator. Make sure when you do that, um, when you have a rational expression like this, a fraction, you want to put parentheses in when you actually type it into your calculator. So I have done that here. And um, just to let you know what it looks like, you type it in. Should look something like this: x squared minus 6x plus 8 divided by x minus 2. And then we're going to graph that on our standard window. And you can see it looks like a linear function. They're just aligned uh, with some positive slope. And <clears throat> the question is: looking at the graph doesn't always tell you the picture. Um, and this is where it's going to be important that you're comfortable with your calculator as far as using the table, using the window functions, um, and stuff like that. Uh, we will go over all those things. But also, what I want you to do is have the skill to look at our function and to recognize possible um, problems with the domain. Now, reviewing domain, remember those are values of x that uh, make our function either undefined or do something mathematically illegal, I like to say. And one of the most important things that, are, that we look for as far as being illegal would be dividing by zero. And in this example, if we chose x equal to 2, it would obviously make the denominator zero. And dividing by zero is not allowed in our mathematical system. Otherwise, we would have some serious issues with everything we do. So <clears throat> that means when x equals 2, there's a problem with this graph. But looking at our calculator, when x equals 2, it appears that there's nothing wrong with it there. I don't see any reason why we need to be alarmed. But if we look a little bit farther, um, we look at our table, for example, you can see when x equals 2, we have an error message. Now, our calculator isn't good enough um, as far as pictures or pixels to show us the hole in the graph at x equals 2, but there is one there. So what we have to do instead is notice that. Recognize that x equals 2 is not in the domain. But, again, as far as the limit is concerned, with limits we're saying when we approach x equals 2, can we tell how high this function wanted to be? You can see coming from both directions, we're approaching that circle. It looks like the function really wanted to be, you know, somewhere around 2, negative 2 for height. So that's what we're talking about limits. This function really wanted to be a height at x, x equals 2, but can't be because of dividing by 0. So how do we figure that out? Well, there's a couple different ways. We can look at our table. Um, if you go to table set, which is above window, so you can see I, the window is highlighted there. I hit second, then the window button to get this table set up. The top part of the table is where, when I hit table, it looks, starts at x equals 0, which is fine. We're going to look at x equals 2. So I'm going to change that to 2, because that's what we want to look around number 2. It really doesn't matter. This is the part that matters. This is the increment. How Right now it's set at 1, so when you look at the table, it goes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. What we want to do is look at values very close to 2. 
So I want to change this increment to like 0 0.01. Okay, and now if I go back to my table, second, there, you can see around 2, I instead of going down by 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, I go 2.01, 2.02, and so on. And what I want to think of is as we approach 2, as we get very close to 2, and as we're getting closer to 2, I'm going this direction. Getting closer and closer to 2, what I want you to look at is the y values. Our y values, which are here, as we get closer and closer to 2 for the x value, what do the y values do? They get closer and closer to, I would say, negative 2. And then you also want to look at the other side. As we get closer and closer to 2, which we'll call from the, from the left side of 2, lower than 2, as we get closer and closer to 2 here, as we go this way now, what do the y values do? They get closer and closer to negative 2 also. So this limit, as x approaches 2, would equal negative 2. And again, graphically, that makes sense as well. So what we would say here then is the limit as x approaches 2 of the function g of x is 2, negative 2, sorry. Um, I, I introduced Pierre and Jacques here to, to let us know when a limit exists or not. Um, part of our, our issue is, or tasks, if you want to say, is to figure out if a limit indeed exists. And Pierre and Jacques are going to help us. Pierre is an expert mountain climber. He always travels to the left, and he prefers coffee with two spoons of sugar. Jacques, he's mostly known for traveling underground and below sea level, but he's been rumored to take up mountain climbing as well. And Pierre and Jacques texted each other and said they wanted to meet for coffee at x equals 1. So we have Pierre and Jacques, Jacques coming from the left and Pierre coming from the right. So what I want you to do is imagine these two guys walking on the function and as they get closer and closer to x equals 1 from both sides What we're trying to figure out is, are they going to meet each other? Are they going to be at similar heights? Not only similar, but exact heights. If they are, if they're going to meet at the exact same spot, as far as the height is concerned, at x equals 1, then we say the limit exists. If for some reason, as they approach x equals 1, one from the left, one from the right, and they come to different heights, then we say the limit does not exist. Since in this example, Pierre and Jacques will be at exactly the same height when they get really close to 1, we say that the limit does exist. And then we could actually find the limit. We could actually find the height. It appears to be, in this example, to be about 5. Here's an example of a time when the limit does not exist. As we come from the right side, as we get really close to 1, x equals 1, which is right here. As we get really close to that, this is where he'd be standing. As we come from this direction, as we walk up this direction, as we get close to 1, again, we're not getting to 1, but very, very close to it. So he would be standing here. As we get close to 1, these two people would not be at the same height. P 
Pierre and Jacques are at different heights, we say the limit at 1 does not exist. The limit as x approaches 1 of this function h does not exist. Why? Because the left hand limit and the right hand limit does not equal each other. This is what we wrote here on the bottom. Jock from the left ends at a height of 4. We call this the left hand limit. Pierre from the right ends at a height of 2. We call this the right hand limit. For a limit to exist, the left hand limit and right hand limit must be the same. So the limit at, as x approaches 1 does not exist. Now, we have a way of writing the left-hand limit. We write it this way. The limit as x approaches 1 with this minus sign right here. Now, the computer didn't do a very good job here. As x approaches 1 from the left, put the minus sign kind of as a superscript there. So we'd write it like this. The limit as we approach 1, the minus sign, if you think of the negative numbers are over here, that means the net minus sign comes, means we're coming from the left, from the negative numbers. Towards, now it doesn't necessarily have to be negative, but you think of negative being left and moving left to right. And the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, as we approach 1 from the right, we're at a height of 2. And since this number does not equal this one, the limit does not exist. And how we write that again is the limit as x approaches 1 with not a plus or a minus. That means we're coming from both directions. The limit does not exist. All right. How do we find the limit? How do we find the actual number? Well, we could look at the graph. We just did that. We looked at the graph and saw that the left and the right were not the same. We could look at the table on our calculator. So I showed you how as we approach 2 from the left and the right, we, we got a number. We can do something that's called substitution. We can do something called factoring and something called conjugate. And we're going to go over those in the next couple lessons. First one is substitution. Substitution to find limits. We hope this method works. It's, it's, this is the, the book definition. The limit as x approaches some number c, some number or constant, that we call c. When we approach that number, if we can simply take that number and plug it in, like we did with that x squared, as x approached 2, we just did 2 squared and got 4. If we can do that without it mathematically going wrong, without dividing by 0 or having like a negative square root, if we can plug this number in to the function and, it, and we can do that without any errors, then that is the limit. For example, number 1 down here. What's the limit as x approaches 3 of this function? Well, the limit is simply, can we use substitution? Can we just take this 3 and plug it in for x? When we do that, yes, we can do 3 plus 6. It's 9. So we can just use substitution since f of 3 is 9. That is also the limit. That's substitution. Now, if we go back to my example from earlier, on this problem here, can I just plug this 2 into this function up here? I cannot, because when I do that, I would get I would get 4 minus 12 plus 8 all over 0. And I'd be dividing by 0. Substitution does not work. 
So when I say there's five ways to find limits, you hope substitution works because that's the easiest. But if it doesn't work, then you have to look at one of the other ones. So substitution. So here's g of x. Can we use substitution? Not sure. So let's try g of 1. When we plug 1 in, we get 1 plus 7, 1 squared minus 9 times 1 plus 2. We get 8 over negative 8 plus 2. We get negative 4 thirds. Is that an answer? Yes. Do we do anything illegally mathematically? No. So negative 4 thirds would be our limit using substitution. Can we use substitution here? Well, as long as we as long as sine at pi over 6 exists, we should be fine. Remember, we're going to use our unit circle for this. And sine at pi over 6. We shall all know. So we're going to do h of pi over 6. So that's sine at pi over 6, which is 1 half. Minus 1, which is negative 1 half. Yep, so substitution works for that one as well. Your first assignment is page 62, uh, 1 through 16, uh, numbers 31 and 32. Again, I'd like you to do this assignment in pencil if possible.